So, hi everybody, thanks for coming. My name is Amaya, she is Sara, and uh, we are two female developers that have been working as a developer uh, for more than 20 years already. Uh, I want to clarify that I start coding with two years. <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah. Uh, apart from that, we are here just to share some experiences uh, from us as uh, female developers and for our colleagues, also female developers in EdTech. We guess that you will be wondering why, uh, why we why we choose uh, this title for the presentation. Not the women in the tech part, but the uh, when men resume queues are longer than women's. Uh, that's based on a real uh, experience that we live. Uh, some years ago, when we went to a PHP conference during the break, uh, we were surprised because we, when we went to the restroom, uh, the women's was totally empty and there was a huge queue in the men's one. So yeah, <laughs> based on that uh, real history. Uh, we, we, we will be using a Google Lab uh, for this session. Uh, you will find uh, one first question now and you will see that there will be more questions uh, in the future because we want to know, the first thing we, we want to know is which is the restroom that we, you are choosing in this venue right now. So yeah, you can, you can see everything related to the restrooms. <laughs> Uh, the goals for the session, uh, it's like we are not trying to fix anything in, the, in that session. It's a pity that we don't have superpowers to do it, but it's like we are not trying to do this. Uh, we uh, want to share some experiences, as I said before, that uh, some of our colleagues, uh, women, have shared with us. Uh, we will talk about things that might seem so normal, uh, but when you see them, you will think, oh, that's pretty normal. Why they are talking about that? Uh, but they may it feel uncomfortable to some, some people. So even it's like, even you, you think that they are normal, uh, they still remember now, even, and they happened a long time ago. So that, that, that's important for you to see that they, they are, they, they, not, not the normal is not normal for everybody. Uh, at the end of the session, we will be super satisfied if uh, just one single person in the whole room uh, can reflect on any of them. That's all. So first we're going to start some, with some raw data that we find about so research and statistics in the internet uh, related to women in tech. So uh, you're going to find in the slides you have the source of the uh, research and statistics if you want to check more or look for some more numbers or data or whatever. Uh, less than 30% of software programmers are women in the US and they l earn less money for the same roles and, and, um, yeah, and jobs than, than men. So. And another thing, another data that was curious for us is that uh, the only 4% of the funding went to female funded uh, startups or only 60% of 16% uh, uh, to mixed teams, even though the startups founded or co-founded by women get more revenue. So even though they got revenue, they get less fundings. So about open source contributors or open source world, that is our world, uh, women represent only 5% of the <laughs> Apache Software Foundation, uh, only 9% of Linux kernel, 10% uh, of OpenStack, and only 9% of the GitHub users are women. And what about Moodle? Uh, in Moodle, the, in the total uh, number of employees, there is 40%, uh, which is not bad. It's a lot of people. But then, if we start looking deeper and we look at the technical departments, like the product one, which, by the way, is led by a woman, uh, is Marie. Uh, we have a 33%, which is lower. And then if we look at just the developers, uh, we are talking about five people. So yeah, one eleven percent, which is not, not too high. And with the model community, the numbers are quite similar to the ones that Amaya shared before. Uh, in the Moodle top 100 contributors, there are only eight women, which is okay, but mm, could be better. And in the particularly helpful models in the forums, uh, in the model.org, uh, we have a 10%, which is also, it's like, it's similar to other open source projects. So yeah, now we're gonna share specific cases, real cases that our colleagues share with us. Uh, they happen during their 
uh, whole world life, so it could happen some years ago. Uh, you have you can use the same Wook Lab if you want to share with us. If you feel represented, no matter the gender, of course. If you feel represented in any of those cases, Julia will help us with the Wook Lab. Thanks, Julia, by the way, for all your help uh, preparing this presentation. So we're gonna start um, <laughs> saying that. We want to make it clear, we are not judging, okay, we are just sharing and just, we would like you to reflect, uh, to think about them, but that's it, we are not judging anything. So the first case is something related to something that happened and at least in Spain has been pre very well known. Uh, because I don't know if you know, but the Spanish female football team has been uh, a champion in the World League. So uh, during the, the celebration of the championship, one of the managers of the federation grabbed uh, Jenny Osmoso's uh, head, uh, one of the players, and gave her a kiss with no consent. So here at least was very unknown, I don't know in the rest of the world, but, uh, but this is something very specific that has been in all the news and everywhere, but this is something that still happens, okay? So there are uh, experiences that some of our colleagues share with us related to, to that. So uh, has ever your manager or someone about you in rank has taken advantage of a celebration, party, like a celebration or relation moment to kiss you, touch you, or get too close without consent? Running like a girl was a campaign run by like 10 years ago. Uh, and it was like to say, because before it's like, sometimes when we heard running like a girl, it's something bad. Uh, but it's like, I'm going to explain you a secret. We are girls. <laughs> so sometimes we do things like girls. I think it's normal, it's okay, it's not bad. Uh, and in fact, related to girls running, I want to share with you an experience. Last weekend in my town, we were organizing a competition uh, for children from zero to uh, 14 years old, three competitions. And do you know who was the winner of the three competitions? Three different girls. So say, we, girls can run and girls can also win. So yeah, have you ever been told that you do things like a girl? Yeah, this is another experience, very common. Uh, it's important, and we know that, that it's very important to keep people hydrated. We, are, we have nothing against that. But it's usually, have you been constantly asked to bring water or coffee or even tea, you know, <laughs> to the meetings? Yeah, forever young. Remember, I'm young. Um, yeah, I must confess that I am not 22, yeah. But sometimes people that think that I am still 22, and they call and it's like, yeah. So sometimes when people call and uh, it's a, a woman, the one uh, taking the phone, answering the phone, uh, they think that you are a secretary, but we are not, we are developers, so yeah. Have you ever been mistaken for someone secretary or intern, even when that someone is younger? Yeah. Another point, parenthood is not easy. Okay, we know that, but it's not easy for everybody, whatever you are male, female, or whatever. But during a hiring process, have you ever been asked if you want to have children? Or have you ever been passed over promotion just because you have children? That one is tricky uh, because it's like, uh, Sometimes it's like we are women and sometimes we know what we are talking about, so we are assertive and if we are too assertive, so we, somebody can tell us that we are bossy. But on the other side, there were also some people sharing with us uh, that they had the uh, imposter syndrome. So it's like, uh, <laughs> it, uh, it's like, okay, if we are too assertive, uh, we are called bossy, but on the other side, maybe we are not, we don't feel confident enough. Uh, and we, uh, even when people are saying to us all the time that we are capable or are doing things great, no, but we have the syndrome. So yeah, that's tricky. That's why we call it quality or defect. Uh, so, have you ever been called posy for being assertive? Another, another point that has been shared is that numbers are important, but people are much more important. So, we should keep the respect to the people more than the numbers. So, have you been asked to participate in something to just <coughs> fulfill a gender quota? And 
this is the last one. Uh, it's like some of our colleagues uh, shared with us uh, that the majority of their colleagues uh, in IT have been women. And it was like, oh, that's shocking. That's super different to what is happening now uh, to us. So uh, does it mean that maybe the, the, the IT is not something bio biological and there is something cultural or educational? Um, yeah. So. Can you see, can you say uh, that the majority of your colleagues in IT have been women? Is that something that you can affirm? So yeah, uh, those are all the cases that we wanted, the, the summary of the cases that we want to share with you. So now apart from the book lab, if you want, of course, we are not pushing anyone to say anything, but regardless of your gender, how do you feel reflected in any of the courses that we share? So can you raise your hand? Okay, so this is to see that we are not alone. You are not alone. This is normal, it happens to everybody. It's okay to share, it's okay to talk about it because we didn't do anything, else, anything wrong, so it's okay to talk about it. And just a kind reminder for the goal of the goal of the session, just to check that if we cover everything. Remember, we don't, we didn't try to fix anything. We were only sharing some experiences, some real experiences uh, that uh, some women, some colleagues were sharing with us, some women. Uh, thanks to all the women that uh, helped us to prepare this presentation. Uh, yeah, big applause for them. Uh, and uh, it's like if any of you have. Uh, but reflect on them, we consider ourselves super satisfied. Uh, it's not true if there, is, there are any uh, experiences that you want to share with us. If you don't have any experience, we can always meet in the uh, restrooms queue and talk about them. <laughs> No experiences? No. Let's meet in the restroom. Okay. Ah, no, some questions. Ay, cachis, cachis. Ponemos el cachis. Tienes que poner el. ¿Qué vamos a poner? Okay, so uh, gender equity is everywhere, but um, every time I answer a sales call for Moodle, I invariably get told, but can we speak to your technical person? So I said, no, I am the technical person. No, 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 but there must be someone else. Uh, so that's one, and um, in another one of uh, a demo, a client got very like offensive, and uh, he said, who's your boss? So I had to, t I wanted to tell him that I am the boss, I own the company, but I didn't say that. So so I think gender equity is everywhere and um, I mean you are all living in far more progressive countries than some of us. So there are far fewer women in uh, open source and ed tech in countries like India and the patriarchy is so strong that the men just cannot believe that you will answer questions on Moodle hosting or size of server or things like that. So it's a daily thing but I mean you have to confront it so that they change their mindset and you, you know you cannot sort of let it pass. So the next time he says okay if he has a technical technical question he should come back to me so it's a daily it's a daily issue <laughs> so. yeah it is Thank you thanks for sharing, sharing. Yes. Yes. I'll also just share um, so a few years ago I actually worked at a computer and technology sales company so it's basically any PC parts any accessory stuff like that and um, often I'd just be on like the pickup desks but I was brought over to the sales and the people would queue and obviously men were more predominant coming in to get parts. They would look at the people across the desk and you know it was a, whoever was next would go to the next available. They would see you were a woman and you could see in their eyes that they were just like I don't want to be served by you or if they were and they sat down they questioned everything you said and every recommendation because they just couldn't believe that the advice you were giving would be actually good or correct and they would want to get that verified by a man on the desk there and it just made you feel really shit yeah, <laughs> yeah. Too. Thanks, thanks again for sharing. I think we've got time for one more I guess I'll share an experience that's kind of similar to that one. Um, 
very shortly after I started my uh, my job that I'm doing now, we had a professor come on campus um, who he is extremely technologically illiterate. And it is my job to help people no longer be technologically illiterate. And uh, he had the impression that every woman he has ever met is his secretary, which played really nice with our entirely female executive team. Uh, yeah, he no longer works for us. Um, <laughs> But there was a moment where he and I were on like a troubleshooting call and he just started screaming at me that he didn't understand what was going on and why, am I, why aren't I fixing this and blah, 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 blah. I finally was like, you need to stop. I am literally trying to explain to you how to solve this problem right now, but you won't let me speak. So I can't tell you how to fix it. But that's it, thank you. <laughs> Thanks, thank you.